So hello everyone. We are here on uh, the last fourth workshop from uh, the series of um, online seasonal art workshops. It's really exciting. It was an amazing journey. We've been through different workshops, you know, from collage, illustration, fabric bag decorations. So it was amazing, uh, you know, for uh, everyone. Uh, the workshop, uh, the entire program, it is organized by Arts Council with the help of um, um, Arts Council, with the help, uh, and um, it has been um, a swell. Oh, sorry, guys. Yes, a little bit confusing by the end. I got a little bit tired, overwhelmed. <laughs> working over the Christmas and yes. So yes, the program has been organized by Art Classes Group with the help of uh, Arts Council through Culture Recovery Fund, brilliant. <laughs> um, today workshop is about introduction to set design of Zoe Brennan. Uh, just before we carry on, if everyone can get ready the materials. So we need shoe boxes or cardboard. Uh, we need scissors pan, uh, paints, and craft paper. Um, just a few uh, things about the house rules. Please, everyone, keep yourself on mute. If you have any questions, you can write in the question uh, box, or you can um, raise your hand or unmute yourself. Uh, anything else, refreshments, food, or anything else, guys, you know, in your own home. and. Um, after this workshop, please share with us all your works you really want to see. Um, you can share on the Instagram by tagging us at Art Classes Group, or you can email us. You receive as well an email for your feedback. We really want to hear, uh, you know, if you want to see different uh, programs for next year, um, how was this workshop, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. So hopefully next year we'll organize the same type of program we can support more uh, artists as well. Um, yes, so I think this is all for the introduction. And yes, let's hear from Zoe now. Hey, just before, you, just before I think the share screen function is disabled. So if you're able to- Yeah, 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 yeah. in a second, um, yes. So hey, I'm Zoe. Um, I'm a, I do set and costume. Um, design for theatre mainly um, but I also do like installations and events and stuff as well um, and then I also do some of my own art stuff as well it's nice to see you all in your different homes <laughs> um, yeah so I'm going to go through and do a little slideshow introduction to set design because I think it's a bit of a uh, an industry that's a little bit invisible so not that many people um, necessarily knows what goes on behind creating the spaces of performances and stuff um, and then yeah we're gonna together we're gonna analyze a poem and then go away and start making our own model box worlds from the poem and our own little mini characters as well cool so if you guys if you guys are ready and are happy for me to start I can, I'm gonna share my screen yep cool. Great, great. <laughs> Oh god, I'm so embarrassed. Why? Cool. Is that, can you all see that okay? Yeah. Great. Uh, so just in the slideshow now, I'm going to go through and talk about um, like what set designers, what kind of set, what kind of work set designers do, so the different, the different types, and then also run through the process involved. Um, kind of looking at a show that I've, I've done myself. Um, so what is a set designer? A set designer, they kind of design physical spaces um, and that can be for like live performance, like theater and opera and dance and musicals. Um, it might be for film or TV, so anything you might watch um, on Netflix or whatever. Um, music, events, fashion, um, I'll go through these in a bit more detail. Um, but most often it's like about reflecting the kind of themes or ideas behind the story. Um, so I can go through. Uh, so this is the Beyonce and Jay-Z tour on the run. Um, 
and I guess a design a set designer would have thought about the main themes involved in it, which would be about like uh, individuality and then also being together and about un union and things. Um, so they they reflected those themes by so like the the runway set well, that allows for kind of two separate playing places, um, which is the individuality theme. Um, the the screens they kind of move apart and they go together. Um, and it also allows for like the video aspects um, to do that and to show show the performers, which is really important. Um, and then there was also like a kind of giant bridge that connects them. Um, so it's all of these things that they're drawing from the themes that they would have spoken to <laughs> spoken to the performers about. Um, but it also thinks about like the movement of the performers and how they can best move around it. Um, it's also a touring set, so how it gets put up and down very, very quickly. Um, and then also like light and sound, how they work in the space and the video and choreography and the effects where smoke might come from. All of these kind of aspects are considered by the set designer, um, as well as like thinking about costumes and the way everything works together. Um, and also the relationship to the audience, which I always think is probably the most important thing is like if you're going to pay lots of money to go see Beyonce and Jay-Z, you want to be able to see it properly. Um, so that's a good thing to always think about is how someone is viewing the space. So this is like a runway. Uh, so for fashion, which is very, uh, this one particularly is very theatrical um, with lots of like natural materials within another space. Uh, dance. Um, yeah. This is His Dark Materials, which has been on BBC. I don't know if anyone has been watching it. Um, this is an example of a kind of outside set that's been created actually indoors. So there's lots of like clever, clever things that they do to make it look like a outside space. Um, fashion photography, uh, which you can be very, very playful with. Um, you've got some very exciting set designs happening within them. Again, this one's quite theatrical, I'd say. Uh, opera. Uh, this is pretty abstract, this set. I'm going to show you an example of a naturalistic set, which is um, slightly different in a bit. Uh, film set. And these, again, are all created within, within other spaces. Um, and then this is an example of a theatre, and this is a naturalistic set, um, which means that it's kind of almost an exact replica of a, of a, real, a real space. Um, but it kind of only really works, I guess, within theatre if if it's just one location or you're able to create really, really smooth transitions between locations, um, unless you have a really, yeah, if you've got a really big budget to do that, then that might work. Because the most important thing about creating a, a set is just for theatre anyway, is for, to create a really, like you have to suspend the belief, the audience has to really believe that they're there. Um, cool, I can talk a bit about the process involved. Like I say, I'm, my background's uh, predominantly in theatre, um, so I'll take you through uh, the way I work, which might be quite different from if you're working in a different medium, like fashion, for example, would be quite different. Um, so I always start with a play text um, or a kind of concept for a story, um, and I go through scene by scene and I take notes. Um, so think about like what happens, uh, the things that are used, what it says, what it needs, ideas, questions, and also things like locations, timing, so like seasons, also time of day, if it might jump between times, uh, the characters that are there, the relationship between the characters, because the space can always um, contribute to that relationship, uh, the transitions, and then Im any imagery that I think is exciting. And then, yeah, questions and ideas are always good to roll with as well. Uh, I do some really rough drawings, which you guys might want to do before you start working in the space, just to have a, a plan about what you, how you want to, how you see the space. I always find that really useful. Um, and then I start doing some kind of basic 3D modeling. You can see in the bottom, um, the bottom left corner is some kind of, I've started working in three dimensions, um, which is a really big part of set design is model making. Um, so it kind of allows you to, have a 3D imagining of the space. And that's, I guess, what's quite different about set design from maybe making a, a, a more like an arts piece. Um, this is an example of some of my model making. Uh, and in theater, we 
usually work in one to 25 scale or one to 50. So these are all examples of uh, one to 25, which means that if you get a human being, they're gonna be just one twenty-fifth. So if you split them into 25 pieces, it'll just be one of them. So it'll be about like that big. Um, and we can kind of determine our own scale when we go and make our own models, um, because it all comes down to relativity. So this is not an example of my work, but if you think about creating a space, it's always in relation to a human in that space. Um, so we'll want to determine, determine ourselves. So if you make a really huge person, um, that space is going to be in relation to that person. Um, so we do a white card model. Um, so it's without any textures or colors or details. It's more just the kind of architecture of the space. Um, and that's really useful to see the way things might move. Um, and also the characters might move within them. Ooh, and we do... Is it you all right? We... I can't. Yeah, yeah, all is fine, all is. All is fine, sorry, I can't see the screen. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we, do a, we go on and do a final model, so that's with all of the color and the texture. And we also use this to storyboard. Um, which is quite useful for tracking through the different scenes and seeing how the set might change or the characters might move. Um, and that's really useful for the director or the choreographer or the lighting designer to see what the final space might look like. Uh, very quickly, it gets built um, by, by uh, carpenters, uh, which is always very exciting to see it in the full scale. Um, then it gets painted and we call this scenic art. Um, this is quite a simple, scenic art rendering, I guess, because it's only two colors, um, although the, the curling was quite a challenge. Um, but within like, if you're working in TV or film, it often gets very intricate. They do very clever things with textures and everything to make it look like um, real life. So the His Dark Materials example would be an example of that. Um, yeah, and then the performance is some brief shots. This was quite a small studio show, so. Um, yeah, um, that was oh yeah, a pretty brief um, condensed uh, journey into designing for theatre, um, and we can we can start doing our own our own version of that now. So starting from analysing a text and then creating our own model. Um, uh, just some things to think about. I'm going to give you guys a text in a second on the chat chat function. Um, but the main things to look out for is, I guess, so the location, so where where we are, if we visit more than one place, how we show this. Um, but I guess a secret with that is that you can always kind of ignore it. Um, it's always a decision that you can you make creatively. Um, so the naturalistic sets that we show we saw before um, is an option. Uh, but if you can kind of make the same point or give the same theme in a completely abstract way, then it works as well. Like. Um, if you wanted to show that you uh, you find baking really confusing, you might set your whole story of baking within the clouds to show that you're very confused because that's actually the main point that you're making. But you might also want to include an oven in the clouds just so that you can still do the thing you need to do. Um, time is always a good thing to look out for. So the season or the time of day, if it goes from morning to night, that might be important to the story to move it along. So we need to show that in some way. Um, the characters are always really important. So who's there, how many people are there, how do they interact with the space or each other in that space? If it might be a very intimate scene, you might make, want to make everything feel very, very big and them to feel very small or all of those kind of things. Um, and then I guess just imagery really is the main thing that I think we should look out for today um, is just about like, things that are exciting or make our imagination get excited um, and we can kind of roll with that really. Um, yeah, so I will stop sharing my screen now if I can find my mouse. mouse. And then I will put the poem in the chat box so we can all go through and read Maybe a little bit if everyone feels up for that. If not, ooh. I'm just maybe I'll do it. Okay. Just...
I'm going to do it in pieces because I think it can't um, handle all of it at once. So there are 18 verses in this, so I guess we can all Oh, nearly there, nearly there. There we go. Super long message. Um, but I don't know if people are people would be people be happy to happy to be happy to read as well. Yeah, I think it would be nice. Yes, if you can read for us. <laughs> okay, of course. Uh, so this is a poem by Lewis Carroll, um, The Walrus and the Carpenter. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, so just one thing. So uh, before we read the, the uh, poem, so what are the expectations from everyone? So the expectations is that we're going to make a little um, set, set model of the poem. So we're going to go through and analyze and think about the, like I've just said, the locations and things that we might want to draw from. Um, we can, if you want to do some little drawings in preparation, and then we're going to make our own little uh, shoebox models um, of the spaces so that, as though they're little stage sets um, for people to look at. So, so, the, so the inspiration will be the poem? Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Is everyone okay with that? Let me know in the chat if you guys have any questions throughout, or you can message me directly, I'm happy to answer. Um, is it okay so far? Yeah, I think we can, uh, yeah, yeah, continue, yeah. Cool, so this is the walrus and the carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was in the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet as wet could be, the sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead, there were no birds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept, swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Oh, oysters come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk, along the briny beach. We cannot do for more, with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their coats were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four oysters followed them and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last and more and more and more, all hopping through the frothy waves or scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat. And some of us are out of breath and all of us are very fat. No hurry, said the carpenter, they thanked him for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cry, turning a little blue. After such kindness, what? That would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are so very nice. The carpenter said nothing but cut us another slice. I wish you were not so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we've brought them out so far and made them trot so quick, the carpenter said nothing but the butter's bread too thick. 
I weep for you, the war said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the larger size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer that came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. So that's the poem for you. Um, I can share my screen again. We can we can see it up, um, or we can maybe just have a little chat about the the kind of design imagery that might come from it. So that's it. That's the poem, and it's full, all all eighteen verses. Um, I've kind of gone through and highlighted a few things that for me stuck out. Um, but I'm not sure if, if you guys have any other ideas. Um, just, just some kind of ideas that I felt like stood out. There was obviously a lot of, um, you know, natural, natural imagery, a lot of, you can see the beach quite clearly. Um, I love the bit as well that talked about the, the cabbages and kings down there. Um, that feels like that could in itself be a whole, a whole world to create from. Does anyone else have any have any ideas for certain bits that come out? It's quite a lot to take in. I think one thing as well that seems to be um, seems to be there is that. The, the walking from the walrus and the carpenter and the little oysters who seem like great characters. And I think that's how I'm gonna be spending the session is to try and make some little model oysters. Um, but yeah, thinking about the walking, the walking with the oysters um, to, before they sit down to eat them, feels very funny to me. Uh, there is a question. Uh how a carpenter would look like, probably dressed and... Uh... I'm gonna go back. Um, am I sharing my screen still? No. Um, well, I, I guess that's that's really up to you, what, what you think of when you think about a, a carpenter, you know? So I've made a little model figure here. I'm gonna show you guys now um, as, a, as an example. Um, so I've got a little, this is my, this is my walrus figure, um, there he sat on a table. So I've kind of taken that on myself to think they're about to eat all these oysters. I want them to be at a really extravagant dining table in the middle of a beach. Um, we've got like a pile of sand here. My, my carpenter, I've stuck him, stuck him on my rock. Um, he's, he's quite a traditional looking carpenter and as far as he's got his tools, he's got a little helmet, but you could also go for more of a, like, I was Im immediately thinking about like a lumberjack kind of figure. Um, I think it's a real, it's a real up to you. Um, this, this scale wise, I've done it in it. That's probably about a one to 25. I think it's just what I'm used to. Um, but like I said before, if you wanted to create a figure like this big, um, it'll just be this, the space will just be in relation to that. Um, so yeah, what do you think a character looks, a uh, carpenter looks like? That's a it's, a, it's a good question. And I think it's quite a good place to start if you, if we all wanted to start making little figures to sit in our spaces and then build the spaces around the people. That might be quite nice. Uh, was there anything else to share, uh, Zoe? I, I've seen some pictures. In, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you can share with us. Yeah, so with some examples of some models. That's just to kind of like have 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 some inspiration there, and um, just what you can do in this little small small scale model. Um, and yeah, there's, I guess a lot you can think about doing as well, playing with the kind of colors and textures or the realistic images and not. So you've got some really lovely like sea examples up there um, and they talk quite a lot about, about the curling of the sea and everything. So you might wanna play with that. 
Um, you might want to create a really, really naturalistic kitchen uh, like the one above um, and just get elements of sea within that. It's really, it's really open to how, how, how you visualize it yourselves. Um, yeah, but he's, some nice examples here. I really love the one that goes underwater as well. I just think that's amazing. <laughs> Is every is everyone happy to start with character character designing so we can kind of create some little little models of characters maybe on some card I've just done it here so that it has a little a little um, side to it that's able to stand up by itself. Yeah, I think everyone is yeah we are ready to start. Cool, great. And when you when you when you start doing the um, characters, just feel just you 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 can just start drawing on a on a piece of card. That's probably going to be easier, and then cut it out later. Um, and that way that way you can know what you're doing before. Just message me in the chat if 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 you guys come into any problems or anything. Oh. So the the first step is to sketch the characters. Yes. And it's good to do on a cardboard paper. Yeah, a piece of card. I'm gonna i I'm gonna make a little oyster character. Um, so we can look through the poems or just on the chat. Um, so yeah. So it might be that you guys, if, if you're having trouble with uh, thinking about what a carpenter looks like or an oyster or a walrus even, um, it, it's always good to do a little research if you, if you feel like you want to go onto a separate tab and, and look up what that might look like. That's, that's, you're very welcome to do that. Someone is asking if they don't have a card paper, is okay just to use a normal paper or um, something, a thicker paper? Yeah, it's okay if you use that. The thicker, the better, though, just for it to stand up. So you might want to, if you have some, or anything, you might want to stick your pieces of paper to create a bit more of a, um, a, sturdy, a sturdy base for it, because the paper might just fall over a little bit. Hey, Elizabeth. So we're just, um, there's a poem here that we've uh, been looking at and we're just gonna go through and uh, we've just looked, looked at some kind of ways to, to analyze it or things to take inspiration from. I don't know what's best is to share my screen again to look at some of the, some of the little bits we thought were important. Um, we're making scale models. So it, you were kind of, I was saying that we usually do one to 25. So, um, a 25th of a version of a real human being. So just a, a very small version. And we're doing it in shoe boxes to kind of create the theatrical model spaces, um, kind of drawing inspiration from the poem we've looked at. 
go back to the, the These are some examples of some models that we might be inspired by. And this is a poem. And the kind of th things that we were thinking about before is like, so the, the hints about location. So it talks about the sea and the sand a lot of sand. Um, it also talks about the moon, which I guess gives an indication of the time, um, which are all important things to look out for. Uh, but at the moment, we're just starting with some like little character designs um, that will sit in our spaces so that we can build the space around the characters. So yeah, I can leave this up for the moment. Um, I can't view the chat screen uh, and then the chat function when I'm in this screen sharing mode. So is it okay to let me know if there are any questions and I can, can have a look? I don't have any questions, that's all good. Thank you very much. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so, so you can see the chat box. When I'm screen sharing, yeah. Oh, sure. right. oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, if you could let me know if there are any questions, I kind of yeah. want to keep an eye on if everyone's all right. Yeah. Do you want the participants to show the, the characters and then to cut them or they can start cutting if they... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I think go ahead and go ahead and cut them out. I think as well, if you're happy to just do one at the moment, that's fine. If you want to create loads, if you just want to focus on characters, that's fine. But it's good to get them in the in the model so that we can kind of see things and start start working around that as well. I'm just going to turn my heating down. It's been really hot in my in my flat. So yeah, everyone, guys, if you finish, please share with us. We really want to see the characters. <laughs> My grandfather was a carpenter. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, okay. and I used to sneak in his workshop and I was uh, stealing his tools to make uh, small uh, pieces, furniture pieces for my dolls. And one day uh, I took really big sharp tools and I start carving in the wood and all the tools fall, fell on my leg and literally my leg was almost cut. Because yeah, it was like, ah, oh, since that day I didn't touch anything, any wood pieces and ah, oh, it was a horrible experience. But it was nice to have the smell of wood, fresh yeah. wood cut wood yeah so I have, I have good and bad experiences with <laughs> carpenters I think I think I think carpentry is something I would love to be better at I think that the the level of uh detail about every single decision is is incredible yeah. to me I think sometimes sometimes I think that's more of the artistic side of me I find that quite difficult is like I just want to do things and visualize them very quickly and um, mm. We always had a, I learned, I learned the basics where I trained, but um, they always said the rule was to me measure twice, cut once, because otherwise you're just, you're just, yeah. <laughs> you're just going to be making mistakes. Um, so I think you, it's a pretty specific art to be good at. I have a lot of admiration for it. I'd love to build my own furniture. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's good to develop your vision in a 3D. I, <laughs> so I study mostly just drawing and painting, but it's good to envision in everything in 3D as well. So yeah, yeah really good. Well, that's kind of, yeah, from the examples that I was showing earlier of the kind of initial sketching, I, f I find really useful and I really like drawing, but I think 
my brain is so three-dimensional and in terms mm. of visualizing I think I find it very helpful to be able to a lot of people spend uh, take a, lo a lot longer to get into the model when they work but I find that very quickly I need to be to be visualizing things in a model I find it very useful um, and that's I guess quite a big thing with set design is you're always working with other people so you're working yeah. with directors or choreographers and you want to be able to to move things around it's a very good a good technique is to be able to to move things that's good to work in a team yeah uh, usually visual artists are very lonely wolves <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean there i think there are definitely um there are definitely points of of that as well but yeah i think working with people is great so yeah guys if anyone finished can you please show us your uh, characters carpenters and let's see Yeah, the, the, this this walrus is like, I've I've it's as though I've decided in this production or whatever that there's going to be a real life walrus rather than someone playing a walrus. So that's a decision that you guys can make as well. You're casting your casting your characters. You could you could do a walrus who's playing a carpenter. It's really up to you. <laughs> What are you guys using to do your characters? Is it paints or crayons or pens? I heard some people mentioned paints. Paints? Yeah, I'm trying to do some paint paints here, but I'm like, maybe it's not gonna, might not dry very quickly, but that's okay. The good thing is that you can always jump in and out. So if we don't finish, the model today, then that's fine because it's something you guys can carry on or just carry on doing different characters for. I see people already started uh, cutting their characters. Exciting. <laughs> There can be lots of really exciting ways to do model making as well of like you can do um, mold making and kind of miniature casting and stuff for your um, for recreating a lot of the same thing it might be that you're you can get some really intricate crazy crazy models um, and it might be useful for that sometimes. We can't in the background. So if you guys cut out your figures, or you're getting there. Oh, great. That's really oh, nice. Oh, so cute. So if you want to, if you want to put a little something on the back like this, so I've just put this on with a bit of um, glue and sellotape just to allow it to stand up. 
on its own. It might need a few of these. Uh, it's always good to start from quite high up so that the kind of triangle shape has a little base to sit on. That's really nice. I like the way you've done the little background as well. I feel like I'm the messiest person in the world. I feel like every time I try doing anything, I just get it everywhere. It's a real problem. All of my clothes are just covered in, covered in stuff all the time. We had a previous workshop of collage. So the same the artist <laughs> was saying, oh, I'm the messiest. <laughs> so I think it's typical to all artists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love being messy. I don't mind, honestly. I just go out to my clothes. <laughs> Like this, people are keep staring. You know, I I'm an artist, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot. Of, I've had a lot of people comment on my very very messy clothes and be like, "Oh, so trendy." I see this in the shops sometimes, and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I don't think so." <laughs> oh, we have from Akshara. That's lovely. Very nice. Very great. nice, Akshara. So I think you can start cutting the characters. <laughs> so cute. I love the teeth on it. <laughs> From Yusuf. It's called the walrus and the cup. Well done, guys. You're so, so nice. Very nice, guys. And uh, well done. Um, so, uh, Zoe, maybe if you can uh, tell the participants how to make the stand for the characters. So cute. <laughs> so if you want to cut out just a triangle piece like this, so one side needs to be really, really straight and one side needs to be kind of as though it's a triangle so it's able to do that and then we want to take some glue i think my oyster with with some shoes on is looking not so good i haven't quite got there yet <laughs> um so once we've got the character i'm going to do it on this guy we want to Take a little bit of glue and just on the straight edge, so it's going to be a 90 degree angle as though you're going like this with your hand. And then that's going to be a triangle. And we want to glue the straight edge and then just place it like this. Can you see that okay? So you go straight along there. And if it doesn't quite, if it doesn't quite stick, you can put a little bit of tape there just to balance it. Oh, do you see that okay? Yeah, 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 very nice. So then it can balance. <laughs> Got my cat on my table mm -hmm. now. I'm just gonna. <laughs>
Sometimes it can get very fiddly doing little, little tiny figures with your scissors. Um, so don't worry if you want to kind of create a little border around it or something, you can kind of do that up to you. How, how did you find your passion, Zoe, for uh, set design? And you're more into theater, no, type of uh, set design? Yeah, so I mainly work in theater. I've done some like installation things and event event design, uh, but yeah, mainly mainly theater. So um, how did you find out your passion for uh, set design? Oh, that's amazing, Yusuf. I love that. I oh. love that orange, the orange base looks amazing. Um, um, Thank I, you. You're welcome. It looks great. Um, so I I started assisting on shows when I was probably about like 14 or 15 mm -hmm. at a local theatre um, and assisted lots of really great young designers so I, it was a quite a um, thrown in at the deep end I guess introduction but I think it seems to be a, um, a career that I think a lot of people don't acknowledge it as as one for a long time where they don't realise that someone's making one of the set of the show that they might go to see or whatever um, so yeah, it's quite quite niche, I guess, and I trained trained in it as well. Um, but I'm yeah, I, it's a it's a good one, and I think matches a lot of my skills. So I like it. That looks great. Is that a walrus as well? Wow, that's lovely. So cute. <laughs> Cool. So if you guys, if you guys have your figures now, or you're starting to have your figures, you can maybe just you can take everything away in your in your model and just see what a figure looks like, um, kind of standalone, and we can think about the scale, like what we were saying before. Um, so thinking about like how how big is a person in relation to your shoebox, and then you can start working around from there. We can have a look again at the poem and about. The ideas that we might want to pursue from the images that the poem talks about, all the locations and stuff. Um, would it be? I, I'll go back to the the poem now, and I'll leave that up for a little bit. Yeah, and like I said before, it's it's really open for you to take take what you want to take from it. So, if actually you're actually really excited by one image of of the cabbages and the kings, and you have a whole story that comes from that, and um, that you want to pursue, please pursue that um, because I think it's all different for everyone as well. And this has some quite clear images in it in the poem. Um, if your brain works completely differently, that's also great. Um, some of the most exciting things to see, I think, is is when it's a set is really not what you might expect from the story. It's also, be good once we start to think about the different materials that we might want to use. So it does talk a lot about the the sand. It says such quantities of sand, which I've highlighted down at the kind of on the first set of paragraphs. Um, and we can think about what we could substitute in for sand. I've just painted, painted my, my box on the base here. Um, I've created a little sand mound out of paper and I just scrunched some pieces of paper up um, and then built some paper around that um, and have painted it. But I was thinking a great, a great um, technique, you could use something like couscous or something to kind of really create that texture. Um, so that's also really important is like just thinking about the materials that we might use in the model. Um, and they talk about the, they rested, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. Um, you might want to there think about what a real rock might look like in the space because immediately we're going to have something that's going to look really amazing um, and realistic. So maybe that's if you're creating something more naturalistic like we talked about before. But again, it's completely up to you.
in England, a lot of the way that um, a lot of set designers are also costume designers. So that's what I do as well. I design, I find it very difficult to design one without the other because um, it feels like, like we're doing now, we're designing the little characters to sit within the spaces. I think that to me, that feels like such a significant, a significant part of doing the set design is the people in it. Um, Everyone doing okay? Everyone is uh, yeah working on their projects. Um, brilliant, very nice. So after the characters, uh, what what are the steps? The steps are so if we if we've got the ooh, if we've got the characters in model and we've got some ideas for the spaces, uh, I think the first thing to do would be to to kind of either put some paper around the sides so that we've all got a, a white space to work from. So we saw the white card model before, so it's quite useful personally, I think, to start from a completely empty canvas but the canvas is going to be the shoebox model that you're going to create. So it's going to be a white space. And from that, you can start painting either your sky or your clouds or whatever you want to start with. And you're creating a background for that. And then we can start making the things in the space. So first step is to kind of maybe lay some pieces of paper on the inside or, or apply kind of white paint first onto the model. Oh, great. Nice, Lisa. Yeah, you've done those. That looks great. I had made uh, like a walrus out of clay. Wow! <laughs> and a carpenter with a tool belt. Great! Can you roll that further to into the screen? I mean, into the camera. Yeah, it's a little crude, but you know. Ah, oh, lovely. So uh, made out of clay. Yeah, it's pulmonary clay. Oh wow! Great! Yeah. yeah. When I like it. And it will look nice painted, is it, when it will dry? No, it stays so, it's, it's um, you have to bake it in order for it to get hard. Oh. Otherwise it stays uh, soft. Yes. Oh, wow. We, we all often use a, um, a material called Sculpey as well, um, which I think yeah, works. Sculpey. Yeah, yeah, do you also, yeah. It's a similar, and it's, it's nice, I think, to have, have things 3D. Oh, cool. That's great. Good to see you there. Are you going to paint it, Lisa? Yeah, I started to uh, uh, put some color on it. Yeah. Because it's real quick. Yeah. Wow. But then I could paint over it if, you know. 
Yes. I have a little table there with a tablecloth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your rock is a really good size as well. I think that's really coming from the um, the, the text. Is that a walrus as well? Yeah. So, Did no. you see that? Really lovely. It's great. Yeah. It's great to see the different the different ways that people are doing them as well. That looks lovely. Very have, nice. Have you, uh, Rita? Have you got your 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 box as well? Um, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> cool. L Lisa, what time is it uh, there? in uh, Las Vegas. It's almost eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, this is why I have such, so much sun there. <laughs> I was feeling, ah, so much sun. I'm missing sun. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it starts at seven in the morning. <laughs> oh gosh, how is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say I need my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that is so nice, oh. So with with your rock, it might be um, it might be nice to to put uh, some I don't know how you usually work, but if you, if you were to put some white over it and to fill it in, then it might be easier to paint or to kind of create a base layer already. Um, if you wanted to paint it as well, it looks great there. Anyone else started their boxes? It's really fun to see. It's like from one poem, different stories, you know, they, they are starting. Yeah, for sure. I think that's always a, a really exciting part of it is that everyone working from the same thing could have completely different interpretations. No, nothing is ever going to be the same, really. Yeah. My daughter had a go, but she sent me a picture of hers. I don't know if you could see it. Oh. oh, wow. From what I can see, that's really yes. cool. Yes. I'd, I'd, I'd love to, to see these when they're all done, to, to send them would be great. Yes. Can you send those guys by email, or, you know, these pictures or um, on Instagram would be nice. Oh, so What's nice. the email? Yeah, well, you can reply to the um, Zoom link, you know, uh, the email of the Zoom link, you can reply with the, and attach the picture. And I'll do that. With oh, mine. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'll take a picture of this, send it to Celia. Cause her, her internet went out. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> She's in the Grand Canyon, so it's all, it's always iffy. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing to think about everyone in, in different locations. Yeah. All scattered. It's lovely. I think in so many ways, Zoom has been like such a, an amazing uh, st step in the way that we're all yeah. to, uh, to work together and stuff. It's lovely. I'm just doing some surgery on my oyster. I wasn't happy with the colors, so he's gonna he's gonna make it. I think it's a really nice thing as to watch the kind of changes. So we've got the stages of our model maybe now, and then if we continue working on it or the, we can paint it and stuff, it'll really it'll look really really different and it'll change throughout. So that's always really nice as to. Keep 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 recording the process as it changes is always great. Yes. Oh, is that a box down there? 
Wow, really nice. Is that a red floor as well? I can see. Cool. It's from That's yourself, uh, Zoe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it's an orange floor. It's just a, it's just a bit dark in the inside. I really like that. Very nice. That's really cool. Really creative. I really like it. And is that a little line of the sea as well? Oh, wow. There's the colour. Nice. Weirdly as well, the, the um, kind of pencil and the way you've done the figures, it feels like the contrast with that and the floor is amazing. I'd love, to, I'd love to see that in real life as though it's like a, you might design the costumes to be all pencil-y looking or pen. <laughs> Looks really good, like a hand-drawn style. Really nice. Maybe, maybe the next step as well now is to think about, so the other things that are in the poem. So we might want to see uh, the rock, um, that the carpenter and the, the walrus and the carpenter is sat on, or we might want to see some sand, or we can think about the other things. And you might want to go outside and get get some rocks or find some sand or something to see if see what that would look like in the model as well. I think Rida and Hiba wanted to show us. Uh, yeah, can you guys show us again? Let me just see your. Uh... Oh, cool. So you started really this. Oh. And the characters, let's see. Would be nice to paint it, is it? The sky and uh, to create the effect of uh, sand. Oh, sorry. Ah. I've yeah. very creatively made your own box there, I see. Very mm. well done. Actually, they were keep telling me that they don't have a shoebox. <laughs> I said, guys, just gather anything. <laughs> oh. Really well. It almost looks as well like it could be, that could be an outside set. So like a pop-up stage or something, which I always love to see in the middle of the kind of the city centre or something. If you're seeing a, a pop-up theatre show, it's always going to be a, a great, very creative looking stage space. I like that a lot. Yeah, also a big, I really liked as well, you can kind of see in my model, but not very well. Um, I think they said, the, the, they described the moon as being very glum, uh, which I thought was a really nice image um, that I wanted to include. You might want to make a moon or something, something like that. How about you, Aksharis? Have you have you got something? Yeah, I'm starting to do the sky. Oh, nice! That's lovely. Nice color. Thank Is that going to be? Wow. Very it's nice. oil color. Very it's oil nice. color. Cool. Man, that's way more advanced than me. I'm just using. I'm not, <laughs> I feel like I, I, I've never really used oil paints. I think I'm impressed. I can't wait to see the the um, the sea color as well. I think it's always so nice. Sometimes you go to the beach and you might see the sky just drift into the sea as well. <laughs> oh, cool! What's that? Oh, nice. nice, nice textures. Yeah. Very nice. I really, really love the way you've done the background for the walrus as well. I think that's so nice. Great. Very nice. Will be like the sand or uh, the sky background? I think you're on mute, mute Elizabeth. I don't know if you're talking or not. <laughs> um, see, because it's kind of like purplish blue. Cool. Yeah. I really like it's it. It's different. It's like a kind of like quite abstract. Like yeah. It feels like a mountain or it could be the sea. It feels really... Um, like sculptural, it's really nice. I think comes in handy the workshop that we had previously, uh, collage workshop. I think Elizabeth was there, yeah. 
So it really comes in handy, that one. Um, the teacher, you know, told us how to work with different textures, materials, different papers. Uh, so it really works for this workshop, you know, to combine collage and uh, to create a set of design. Um, take, take, taking that of like what's in the model into real life, actually, that's such an exciting way to think about things is if you put something, so if you like put a glue stick in, in real scale, what a massive glue stick might look like um, on, a, on a stage space. It's really exciting to think about playing with scale in those ways. Um, always, I love it when the cat, she gets in there, who's just sitting next to the computer now, when she gets in the model, it's very funny to see what that might look like in real life. <laughs> What do you think is the colour that you guys use the most? Because I always find I'm just constantly running out of white, just all the time. <laughs> white, yellow. <laughs> I guess it depends a lot on the, on the, yeah, the kind of work that you're making or the colours you might keep returning to. I think this one, this this one definitely required a lot of blue. <laughs> I think I'm completely out of blue now as well. <laughs> for the sky, yes. <laughs> well, it's nice the idea that you gave us for the sand. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's really, it's really good to, um, like we were saying earlier, to explore the different materials you might yeah. use. It was, it was very exciting. Uh, and I think the, the suggestions on the, on the website for things like paper and card and stuff is, it's really amazing as well what you're able to achieve just with quite limited resources as well. And actually, that is a lot of what we tend to use is just like different forms and thicknesses of cards and stuff yeah. to create things you can see here as well I've done a little like uh, cutlery and, and placemat for the for the dining table although I would have liked to have used a more uh, softer, softer tablecloth fabric I think. Uh, do you know Zoe how is to work like um, uh, the, how the set designers are working in Hollywood for example? Yeah so I think that um, it's quite it's quite different and I've only worked on one TV show before and it's it moves very different because it's very it's much um, quicker process I think uh, and there's a lot more people and a lot more budget involved generally I mean pretty much always um, but I think the the thinking time behind something is a lot a lot quicker because especially for TV because you're always having to respond to things and then it gets made very quickly and I think I find it a less enjoyable process because often it feels less um, conceptual. Like I really like thinking about the ideas or the ways you might interpret things in different ways. Whereas I think often with film and TV, depending on the on the thing itself, is a lot more about creating real environments or mm. very um, I have a friend that worked in uh, Hollywood set design. So she was uh, doing the same little models, villages, this kind of things. And she worked so intense for, I think, three or four years that she got completely sick <laughs> from that yeah. job. She, she said the same, it was, a messy, it was an amazingly well-paid job, but she yeah. said she left it. It was too intense. I have, I have a lot of friends who I... Um trained with on my course who went into working in TV and films and like his dark materials for example that was one that a lot of a lot of my friends have been working on and I think that yeah it's definitely a, there's a lot more money in it and a lot more that looks great uh Rida no Rida and Hiba yeah wonderful oh guys let's put some color on it now I'd love yeah, to see it needs a color <laughs> do you guys have paints yeah, we were just going to. Yes. It's great though. I'm excited to see it. Do you have uh, tube paints or watercolor? Watercolor. Yeah. Oh, let's see, guys. 
How are you getting on, Lisa, as well? What are you doing? Just coloring in and more. Oh, nice. Ooh. I really like the way it like folds out the box. Yeah. Pretty cool. I put the moon in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it almost moon. an amusement park. Like I would love to run around that space. I can really, I can really imagine, imagine being in it, like running up the the, the rock. What did you use? Um, um, marker or pencil? Markers. Markers. Nice effect. Very nice. The rocks really nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I think it's so important to see the see the figures in the space. I really think like that feels like it makes it so much clearer to to visualize when you see something something in it uh, to compare. You can put yourself in those in that position. I was thinking as well. Like it seems that. Now's quite a good time having it after Christmas. We might have some spare boxes around that I can see. I think that might be an Amazon box, right? <laughs> yeah, I just used a regular box that I had on the side. That's great. Throw some paint on it too. Sometimes things can look amazing in in black and white in real life, especially like when there's a the kind of level of detail involved in making it that way. But I think yeah, definitely for this poem, it seems like. Uh, Colour is such a clear indicator of where we are and also like the time of day and everything that we were talking about before. I think that it feels like it's really helpful to be able to visualise it through colour. I love colour. I always use colour. I think it's really nice. Wow, what's, what have you got there? Is that a texture? Is that a texture I see? Read an email. I We use a bin bag. Yeah, nice. What's that for? Is that for the sea or the sky? Um, it's the sky. Nice. Black sky. That'll look good if you do a moon in. That does work. Nice. <laughs> I think we should like, use my background. <laughs> Very creative. I like it. Cling film as well, I think. It, no, not. Um, aluminium foil is very effective as well in this kind of uh, sets, this kind of projects. And yeah, I think, I, I used for my moon, I um, can't really see it in there, but I've kind of used some very like scrunched up paper and then I, and then I worked on top of it to give it a bit of texture. Cause I think paint, paint's always gonna go quite well with a, a bit of texture as well. That looks cool, Yusuf. I can't see. I can't see it very well, but oh yeah! Wow, what have you made? Your... Is that a rock? That's really good. What have you made that out of? That looks really nice. I made it out of paper, and and then I scrunched up and I glued it onto the onto the onto the back of the thing cool really good it looks, it's really got that rocky yeah uh, rocky to it. it works really well 
I did a similar one from, from with with my rock as well. I had to use a an egg carton behind it to have, to give it a bit of structural support to it. Um, but your, yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> looks great. I'd love I'd love to see the sky behind it as well. I think that co like color contrast will look great. I really love the floor as well. I think that floor is amazing. Really like it. Very nice. Indeed, if the sky yeah painted will look amazing. Yeah. When our studio was uh, opened and everyone, the people, children were coming to do the art sessions, we had some children extremely passionate about uh, puppets and theater. Uh, and it's really amazing from where that passion started. I mean, they, they were doing just those crafts, only puppets and this kind of thing, set designs. Uh, now I'm thinking I should have asked them from where the passion, uh, you know, started. Maybe they were going to shows with their parents or but if I'll meet them after this lockdown, <laughs> I'll ask them. Uh, yeah. It's really interesting, you know, how children, they develop specific passions. Uh, yeah, it was really yeah. nice. I always feel so excited when people know about, um, yeah. about but yeah, about working in, in these in these ways, like with yeah, props and puppetry and yeah. costumes. I think that like it I didn't used to go to the theatre very much as a child, but I think that maybe when I did that was a big influence. My brother works in theatre as well, which I think probably was the, the biggest the biggest thing. Um but I think I, I wanna tell everyone about it because I think it's such a great form of of, of of artistry you know like um it's really creative and i think like we were saying earlier like working with other people is so amazing and to see what you're able to see what you visualize in real big scale is amazing it's really exciting there's a real good good russian theater i think for that i think one of the um one of the benefits of working in smaller scale stuff as well as you can kind of be part of all of the different aspects of it so the bit the bits in the presentation about set building and painting and stuff like sometimes on the smaller shows I've worked on I've done all of it like not completely on my own but it's been really good to be part of that process it can exercise all of these different skills that you might want to do um not just the I think when you're working in larger scale stuff, you you just do the design and you do the model and then you send it off and it comes back in, in real form. And it might be that you're sitting in rehearsals or kind of dropping in, uh, but sometimes it's fun to be part of the whole process as well. Yeah, it's true. Yusuf, it's like you're playing a DJ on the on the screen. I love it. You're in, you're out. Where are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I tried to. Uh, yes, let me pin your uh... painting. I did a little painting on it. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, the sky. That looks beautiful. Uh, I love the feeling. Is there kind of like a, um, there's a kind of like glow yeah. for I really like that. That looks really beautiful. Yeah, I I put a like a little background behind the, you know, so you could separate the sky. Yeah. Oh, and look at that as well. Very Actually, nice, Lisa. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting, guys! This look really great. Really nice. Are those real rocks as well? Oh, yes. oh, 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 oh,
I love the yellow walrus as well. That looks super. Really cool. Wow. That is amazing. I'd love, I'd love to do a whole exhibition of models that everyone's made. It would be lovely to see them all in the flesh. Like, <laughs> they look so great. So years ago, when I was younger, I went to go and see um, all the Wallace and Gromit figures that they had done. They made them all out of like plaster scene. They used in the filming. Um, they had them in Bristol. It was an exhibition I did with my parents. It was quite interesting. Yeah, I don't know if as well you've been to the um, the Harry Potter world. Um, I I think they might have the mo uh, some models there, but that really feels to me like from from working in kind of theatre and the arts and stuff, it really feels like a celebration of all of the different careers involved in it. It feels, it felt so great to go around and see, like, yeah, see those be celebrated in a way that they aren't usually, like I said before, it feels like quite an invisible, an invisible industry sometimes. Yeah. Um, there's so many people involved when you think about like wig makers and puppet makers and model makers and all of these different avenues within it it's really it's really great to see i actually heard about this um whole thing via um resource productions i don't know you do? um resource productions i heard about this um these kind of like classes um by resource productions just trying to get people into the film industry uh, yes i was still part of a film group and it's really interesting we were having a discussion about it and saying how when you see films you hear about maybe a couple of the actors and you hear a bit about the director and you don't hear about any of the other kind of creative roles that go into producing a film and I imagine it's exactly the same in theatre it's like you have so many people who are involved in the cameras you have so many people who are involved in costume design you have so many people who do hair and makeup and yet none of that there's no recognition it's like why not yeah, yeah it's exactly it's, it's completely what makes the thing is that, isn't it yeah, my, I have a friend who her job is a crowd controller and she's made her whole, her whole career on controlling crowds. And I'm like, what? Like, I only up until recently, I, I didn't think that was a thing. Like, I mean, it's just, yeah. It's, yeah. But I think they started Oscars for um, set designers or something like this. I think I've seen last year. I'm not sure. Say again, sorry? I think uh, the Oscars started giving uh, for set designers or something. I think they started last year. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Hmm. It's, yeah. So it's probably that. slowly, slowly started being recognized the work of the people behind the stage, is it? Yeah. I think it's a really interesting one as well, thinking about... Um, especially for TV and film, I think about the influence that technology has on it as well, because obviously- mm. Yes, another thing. Might be able to create in, in a set and stuff might be also added onto and afterwards, um, which I think was the case for His Dark Materials, I know, but they also worked with real puppets, but then the CGI and things were built on top of that. And also in theater, you know, technology is, has a really big influence on the way things look or the way that you might now have to use video much more more often than we would have done a few years ago and it's kind of part of the vocabulary of of, of design now um, yeah is it everything is digitalized everything yeah. is the, pro the process is 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 split but definitely like the techniques that you might use on, on stage, like the, the Beyonce tour I showed earlier, like, you know, video could be a significant part of that design is including that. Um, yeah, and I, 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 there's a big conversation with model making in theater about whether or not um, technology is gonna make, make it uh, redundant. But I think, I think there's definitely a lot, I think people are always gonna- oh, the new temporary. Move them around in a really, human tangible way I think is always going to be useful and I think for directors who might not have the uh, tech like be technically minded in the way that designers sometimes are um, models are always going to be really useful yeah I think all industries have been affected by you know uh, digital yeah. work and everything yeah even for me as a visual artist I'm thinking god yeah. what should I do should I carry on painting <laughs> Shall I still use tubes and brushes? 
<laughs> Everything you know is digital, uh, remote, and you paint around you in the virtual world. Yeah, so myself, I'm always in doubt. Should I carry on? <laughs> I'm always talking about how letter writing is just the best thing ever. I really think that there are these art forms, you know, that can't die. Like to see paint on a paint on a canvas is good. It's just such a different experience to to seeing seeing a digital painting, isn't it? You can do amazing things digitally, but I think for me anyway, there's always going to be a like you need to tactile. tactile is really important. I think Shara, you want to show us? Um, I'm just figuring out where to put this thing. To dry. I always find like raising it up is quite useful. Like sometimes I put it on other other shoe boxes. I just collect shoe boxes essentially, and I just I'm stacking them constantly. <laughs> it's nice to have uh, displayed. Yes. You're in like you're an audience member. Um. Brilliant. So guys, please send us your pictures uh, with your works. I'll share with Zoe as well. Yeah. And Rita, do you want to show us as well? Let's see. Oh, yes. Yeah, guys. I think we need to see Carpenter. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the black and white of the carpenter in the bin bag looks amazing. The sky it looks really cool. I think he's sending us to a different type of scene, something more indoors. <laughs> Night. <laughs> oh, I love it, guys. Look at the sky. <laughs> This, my version is like a different universe, but here was ah, Your sisters. Yeah. Ah, guys, is like white, dark, and light. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You it. <laughs> wow. Nice, guys. I love it. Very nice idea. Please send us your pictures, guys. Like Zoe said, maybe we can organize something, you know, to, to share the works on social media. Uh, yeah. This will be really interesting. Really uh, just... really yeah, anyone else? It's very nice. So yes, we are waiting for your pictures. We are going to send an email to everyone for your feedback. And uh, please tell us if you want to see other type of workshops. So we'll organize for uh, next year, the same on Christmas, maybe on, for Easter, we can organize so we can uh, support as well more uh, artists. Um, yes, the email, you can just reply to the emails that you receive. Um, our website is artclassesgroup.com and there are our inf details. Uh, otherwise, is info at artclassesgroup.com. But easier is just replying to the emails that you receive. Or tag us on Instagram at artclassesgroup. Uh, as I mentioned, if you mention, if you write your name and uh, address in uh, the feedback, you'll enter into a prize draw for professional box. We can send worldwide, so it's not limited to UK. Exciting to have you all, guys. We have three more sessions, and hopefully I'll see you all yeah, until the, the uh, last day of uh, our program. Thank you so much, and thank you so much. It was really nice. It was new for all of us. I mean, it was amazing, you know, the experience we had so far. Such a pleasure. It's so lovely to see all your work. Really, send them over. I'd love to see them all. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you so much and see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, aluminium foil. We are going to make different marks and uh, logos or we're going to, yeah, we're going to work with aluminium foil. So get ready this for tomorrow. Thank you so much. See you guys tomorrow. Hopefully all. <laughs> and thank you, Zoe. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Yeah, Maria. What do we need for tomorrow? Uh, aluminium foil. Okay, let me just get quickly. Uh, let me what just stop the recording. <laughs>